So today we are in probably one of the museums I've looked forward to visiting the most here in Gettysburg. The Beyond the Battle Museum located at the Adams County Historical Society here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, home to some of my favorite Civil War historians in the nation. So we're here today, we're going to go in and check out the Beyond the Battle Museum here at the Adams County Historical Society in Gettysburg and want to bring you along with us, so let's go. Inside of the Adams County Beyond the Battle Museum in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Brand new museum just opened. And as you walk in, you have a cool display on the rock, rock formations in Gettysburg and rocks such as Curious Rocks, the Sphinx, the Devil's Slipper, Devil's Kitchen, Forbes Rock, all of these famous rocks here in Gettysburg. And also, Gettysburg has some dinosaur history, so you can come kind of check that out for yourself. And then the Native American history here associated with Gettysburg as well. So pretty cool. Here's some really neat artifacts from the Native American settlements here and the area of Gettysburg. So a lot more history other than just Civil War history. And uh, one of the things that's catching my eye is this Megalodon tooth. Pretty neat. Here's some really cool projectile points here in the museum. So you also got some exhibits about the European settlement here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And you've got some cool information here on the Dobbin House, talking about the history of the Dobbin home and the Scotch-Irish and German settlements. Pretty cool stuff. So this is pretty neat. This is a copy of the Penn family warrant from 1741 requesting a survey of the Manor of Mask in the present day Cumberland Township. And this included the future site of Gettysburg. So here's some road markers from Baltimore Shippensburg road marker. And then the original road marker for Marsh Creek. Here's some stuff on the American Revolutionary Era here in Gettysburg. And I love the way they have this set up. This is some information on the founding of Gettysburg. Uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel Geddes, one of Adams County's early Scotch Irish resident, residents arrived here during the 1740s, and by 1761, he opened a tavern along the Marsh Creek Road. And this is uh, all stuff concerning the establishment of the town of Gettysburg. If I can get it to focus. I helped defend us from French and Indian war parties. We lost many a brother and sister. So much young So there is something that caught my eye in this case, and it's very cool. It's concerning Thaddeus Stevens, who had a law office here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And inside of this museum, well, they have Thaddeus Stevens's chair. Pretty cool. So of course here in Gettysburg, the big claim to fame is the Civil War and Battle of Gettysburg. And in here, you're going to find an abundance of Civil War artifacts or not in abundance of Civil War artifacts. So what we have here is an original rifle that belonged to George Shriver, Sergeant George Shriver, of the 87th Pennsylvania. And it was picked up, This he picked up this discarded Enfield rifle somewhere on a Virginia battlefield. In June of 1863, he was shot in the left arm at the Second Battle of Winchester. But he ended up surviving the war and this is the rifle that he had picked up on a battlefield somewhere in Virginia. 
Here's a really neat battle scar canteen from Corporal William A. Hank of Franklin Township. He was wounded twice during his service, once at Cold Harbor and then again at Sailors Creek. And this canteen was struck while he was drinking from it. Huh. Here we have a United States Medal of Honor presented to this guy at the 1864 Battle of Cedar Creek Sergeant Daniel Regal risked his life to capture an enemy battle flag and for this action he received this very neat Medal of Honor so here we got a drum and bucktail that belonged to Charles Gilbert who was 25 was a musician with Company K and carried this drum and bucktail and he was a native of Gettysburg, fought here in Gettysburg in 1863, and then later became one of the first battlefield guides. Pretty cool to see his original items, and he was from here and fought here. There's a sword that was a presentation sword to Edward McPherson. He was a newspaper editor, politician, and was a commander of Company K. McPherson owned a farm west of Gettysburg, on um, which some of the heaviest fighting took place in the battle. Pretty neat. Right behind the sword, we have an Enfield 1861 pattern rifle that belonged to Private Emmanuel Trossel, a farmer in Adams County. He carried this rifle in the battle, enlisted in 19, and fought in Petersburg as a member of the 184th Pennsylvania. Pretty cool. So Thaddeus Stevens had an ironworks and Juba Early's troops, when they came through Gettysburg, they burnt the ironworks. Well, these are some of the remains from the original Thaddeus Stevens ironworks that the rebel invaders burnt. So one of the things that the civilians of Gettysburg would try to do to keep their belongings and different things when the Confederates got here was, well, make the Confederates think they were friendly. So this is a flag that was stitched together by a family here in Gettysburg and displayed. So when the Gettysburg uh, Confederates arrived at Gettysburg, they would think that they were friendly and maybe preserve their belongings. So everyone knows the photo of this guy right here if you're a big fan of the Battle of Gettysburg. This is John Burns. He was a Gettysburg civilian, veteran of the War of 1812, 69 years old on July the 1st. On July the 1st, he grabbed this musket and fell in with troops on the first day's battlefield. Wow, this is something else to see. This is the same as that rifle he is pictured with. And this is the rifle he grabbed the morning of July the 1st and fought with. That is too cool to see in person. Another thing they did was give him a cane in the city of Pittsburgh. And this is a gold tip cane inscribed with his name. He became a national celebrity. Well, you can see me in this mirror, but this is a mirror from the Spangler farm. And this is uh, Alexander Spangler's home. And there is a bullet still embedded in the mirror from the battle. So during the, after the Battle of Gettysburg, the citizens here in Gettysburg had the task of helping the soldiers who was wounded from both sides. Maria Bishop, or Maria Bishop, rather, lived south of Gettysburg near, uh, little, near Little Round Top. Well, this is the rolling pin she used to help make bread for the soldiers during the battle and afterwards. And right next to it, let me try to zoom in here. Right next to it is a bullet. This is called Catherine Higgins' bullet. Catherine Higgins lived with her daughter and son-in-law at the Sherfy farm, along with the rest of the family, and she fled the farm on July the 2nd. Just as they left her home, a bullet passed through the folds of Catherine's dress. And she kept the bullet as a memento, and this is that bullet. So there is a very cool thing you've got to see here at the Adams County Historical Society when you come. You've seen this picture on JD's channel, and JD has told us about it. And this is 
an experience that you're not going to find anywhere else, probably in any museum in the entire United States. And it is actually a simulation that puts you in the middle of the battle. It's called Caught in the Crosshairs. And there's going to be some really cool stuff that happens when you go in here. So uh, <laughs> I wonder if we can endure the savagery of the savage fighting of the Battle of Gettysburg for ourselves. Alright guys, we're entering inside of Caught in the Crosshairs. And uh, well, I'm going to shut you off because I don't want to ruin the experience for you. So we'll see when we come out. All right, guys, so we just come out of the Caught in the Crosshair simulation here at the Adams County Historical Society Beyond the Battles Museum. And, uh, well, you're just going to have to come see this for yourself. That was uh, something very, very cool. And it's experience you're not going to get in any other museum, probably anywhere. So come check it out for yourself. And we're going to show you a couple more things in this museum. And then we're going to get out of here because I want to leave you something to come see for yourself. So there is a headboard inside of one of these displays, and this comes from the Sweeney House, now known as the Fosworth House, and it's famous for having the Confederate sharpshooter's nest up in the top of it. Well, this is one of the bullet riddle headboards from the home. Also have the sign from uh, William T. King Tailor Shop that hung on our street in downtown Gettysburg. And as the battle was spilling into the town, well, this sign gained the marks of that battle. So we've been talking about the 57th Pennsylvania Veteran Volunteers and their fight at the Sherfie Farm. We were talking about the cherry tree and the cannonball. Well, this is the cannonball that actually come out of that cherry tree. The Union Cannonball that struck the tree that was written about is right in front of us. How cool is that? All right, guys, so we're still here at the Beyond the Battle Museum. We're doing a little short episode for the series, convincing you when you come to Gettysburg to come here because this museum at the Beyond the Battle Museum at Adams County Historical Society is absolutely just phenomenal. And uh, you're going to have to come catch Caught in the Crosshairs for yourself. But I'm here with probably one of my favorite Gettysburg historians, Tim Smith. And uh, watch all of his stuff on YouTube. You guys have to visit the Adams County Historical Society YouTube page. And uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Tim, what? Come visit us here at Gettysburg. We have our brand new museum that highlights the civilian experience during the battle and talks a little bit about what it was like for the local people, the history of the, the area, the history of the fighting and the civilians during the battle, and then what it's been like in the commercialization, com uh, you know, com memorialization process after the Civil War. So we've got lots of stuff to say. Yeah, and guys, you're not going to find any more talented people anywhere in the United States other than this guy and guys like Gary Edelman, Chris White. And I have met so many historians here this weekend. Yeah. For the 160th, it's unreal. People I've read the books of since I was a kid. A kid. That's awesome. So, and uh, come see these guys because you won't be sorry. We'll see you soon. Keep preserving history. Stay safe.